Hi, Sean Durham here again. Uh, just a few ideas on what I do in order to overcome problems of boredom. If, you know, when I go out street photography, uh, I'm looking around and I tend to go back to the same places again and again. There might be five or six places. And I've discovered that if I get interested in where I am by looking at the history or the reason behind buildings, places, streets, and why they're made, it helps me to avoid boredom and take a much more curious look. Uh, people take it for granted that when they walk along a street that they're safe in a city. Uh, that's why you're there. That's why you walk in there. But without a street block and just a straight road, uh, most people would really report that they don't feel very happy about it. They feel bored. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had that experience of walking into a street around a corner and when you walk in, you look and you think, oh boy, it's a long way to the next junction. And it creates a, a deep sense of sort of laborish boredom inside of you that you've got to trundle along this street until you get to the next corner, which could actually be almost a kilometre away or half a kilometre. And that's way too far. Um, so the way that cities are built and neighbourhoods, um, it's been well thought out and experimented with. Um, during the 1970s, they built high-rise buildings in London, believing that's a great way to stack people up on top of each other up until about 15 or 18 floors high, uh, until they discovered that it also means that people don't feel like they're living in homes, they're living in boxes, and the neighbourhood goes to hell real fast. Down below, it's all patio style and there's no plants or anything. It's, it's no fun to live there. But when you have a neighbourhood and, and you know that most people recognise it as an enjoyable neighbourhood to be in, and therefore the people who live there would report that it's actually a lovely place to live, the best you can expect in a city, then when you look around, you'll see that the blocks have been well thought out of no, no bigger than two houses or three houses at the most, so that you don't really have more than 100 metres to walk to the next corner. And if you think about how many street corners are mentioned in rock songs or pop culture, it's a place that creates curiosity, a corner. And if you look at street photography, you'll find that many a photographer has waited and looked at a corner there's a sunshine there, there's a bit of shadow there, and a person just pops out of that corner and they take the shot and sometimes it can look fantastic. Just the way the movement of the body is, the person, the buildings, and lovely framing from probably a shadow being cast by a building. Every street corner has curiosity built into it. It's, it's something you should experiment with when you're out on the street and when you're walking along and you look ahead you're making decisions about where you're going to go, where you're going to stand and wait, where you're going to look. But if you see a street corner, it always creates some sort of feeling in you that thinks, I wonder what's around the corner. Very simple, but really, when it's not there, those, those feelings of curiosity aren't being piqued by anything. It's the same with plants along the streets. It creates a feeling of nature and it goes way back into, apparently, into the evolutionary process of developing human beings. If we don't see plants and flowers, then we don't have signs that life is flourishing. So putting plants into a street and tree-lined streets, it naturally gives us a feeling that all is well, spring is coming at some point, and when those buds come out, we know that life continues and everything is in order. It's another thing that creates a nice atmosphere in a neighborhood. And the reason I'm mentioning this to street photographers is because this is what we're looking for, is emotion on the street. And we're trying to capture that emotion. I talk about the flow of the people and people coming and going, the hustle bustle of the city. All of these things are really important and they're the things that create and peak emotions in us. And we see people doing things and take shots. You know, there's a great shot that I'm always looking for. Uh, it's quite difficult. It's easy to get one, but it's difficult to get a great shot of a person climbing stairs or going into a... Uh, metro station or the underground station. I'm always waiting for that moment when I can hear a train is coming along into the platform. I'm outside on the street, there's the staircase, and somebody walks into the staircase in a hurry to catch that train. When the train comes in, there's a hell of a lot of pressure and therefore wind rushing up the steps. And that person's clothing, if it's the right clothing, like a heavy coat or something, 
will flap all over the place. And you imagine the beautiful shot you can get of a person in a hurry, legs like akimbo, as it were, as they hit the steps uh, and that coat flapping about in the wind that's coming up the stairs. And it's a fantastic shot, hair and all, you know, hair flowing all over the place. I've got a couple of shots like that. I love them. I think they're great. So it's one of those ideas that, you know, the more you know about the city or the places where you visit and you're hanging out and you're doing your street photography, the more you know about what you're looking at, the buildings, the street, and whether it could be a nice or uh, a derelict place and why, um, the more emotion that you will have about where you are. And there are so many street photographers who love what they do. They're determined and they're highly motivated. But one of the things I hear or read on the internet very often from street photographers is that they get bored. And they get bored because they keep going back to the same places. And going back to the same place to take photos is probably a very good idea. But so long as you've got five or six or seven different places you can go to. Because, you know, the weather is going to determine whether that place is going to look good or not or whether it's going to be enjoyable to be there. Uh, some places only look good when the sun is shining and the shadows are you know, like blocked out on the, on the street. But um, one of the most important things is if you just get a little bit of knowledge about the buildings you're looking at and find out how old are they, who built them, why were they built and what's their function, it really does help to build some sort of emotion in you. So anyway, uh, I really hope that's useful to you. It's food for thought. It's an idea. It's a way of looking at things. It's a way of overcoming the problems of boredom. Uh, if you enjoyed this, I hope you can sign up for my um, my channel. Uh, you know, I do my best to make something, a video that is of use to other people and not just me rambling on about something. <laughs> okay, so I hope that it's good for you. All the best. Bye bye. <music>